sin places would occur in our lives, in our homes. Sin places where God's glory is manifested to the world. And the people would see Christ again, crucified. And the world will be drawn to him when I am lifted up. I will draw the world to me. Tonight. My son asked me, why did I have to come? He's 10 years old. He doesn't like for me to travel. And the answer is always the same. Jesus asked me to. Tonight, I believe God is asking us to realign. What is it that you seek? What is it that you boast in? What is it that you want? If we do not realign to the cross of Christ as the pinnacle of God's glory, if we don't perceive it, prize it, pursue it, my brothers and sisters, I am sad to say that we are no longer living or preaching the gospel. Tonight I know before I give an altar call for those who would like to make their lives right with God, I'm going to do it in reverse order tonight. If you know that the Lord has been speaking to you in the last few days and especially tonight about your motives, your ambition, your desires being in other places, in other directions, other focus points. You know, the scripture says this. He says, a man that wants more than two things is a double-minded man. And what does he get from God? Nothing. Nothing. We are fragmented people. Tonight, there's an opportunity, and this is an altar call for believers. God is speaking to you, and there's an arresting presence of the Spirit in your life. Say, I want to realign to God's pinnacle of glory. I want you to leave your seat and come down, and I'm going to pray in a moment. Just get up and come. I don't believe in hype. We don't do it more than once. Either it's God or it's not. And if you cannot make your way to the front, just stand where you are. Sometimes it's important just to do something. If you can just move all the way to the front, thank you. Pastor Fred, if you can come up in a moment as well. The Lord spoke to me two weeks ago and said that if I would say this, that he would touch our hearts and that he would realign us. We cannot come to God unless we are drawn. The drawing power of Jesus generates pursuing power in you. I met my wife the year I announced that I wouldn't get married. Like a fool. I did it publicly. Until I saw her. I found my best friend and I said, I'm finished. It's over. I'm done. Because I realized that I would never be the same again. Her, her beauty drew me. And if you've seen my wife, you would know. I married above my stature. There's a problem here. Why in the world would she say, yes? It's crazy. Tonight, not me. But Christ is going to capture our hearts back to the pinnacle of his glory. The convergence of all of history, all time, on the cross. And this is what will transform the world and thin places will appear in our lives where the heavens and the glory of God is shown. For the whole world will be filled with the knowledge of his glory. Who is the glory? Who is the king of glory? Lord is his name. I'm going to pray, and you should know this by me already. I'm going to teach you an old prayer. Would you forgive me for that? In the church that I minister in, they have competitions to see how many dead people I quote. It's a horrible, terrible sin. But I sense this is what I want to do, and I want to teach you a prayer that comes from the 14th century. It's called the Anima Christi. It's a meditation on the cross. I'm going to pray, and then we, it's on the slides, and I'm going to ask that you pray this with me. Father, here are your people. 
We know you are here because we can sense it. We know you're here. And Lord, we've been so touched with your presence in and through the men and women of God that have ministered. We all stand humbled by your work in and through them. But Lord, you are here. You are here. And we are here. Jesus, Father, would you come? Would you come? Would you come and realign our hearts tonight? Would you take every tree not planted by our heavenly Father, would you uproot it? Father, we pray that you will remove every selfish ambition, every vain dream, every wrong thought and idea, good or bad, that you would come and uproot it out of our lives. And would you, as the old song says, turn our eyes towards your Son, Jesus. Let us be like those four living creatures who do not stop day and night gazing, 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 gazing at the cross of Christ. And say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. The Lamb that was slain before the foundations of the earth. The Lamb that was slain in Golgotha and the Lamb that forever carries the wounds. And now I want you to pray this prayer with me. It should be on the slides. Pray it with me. Soul of Christ, sanctify my soul. Broken body of Christ, make me whole. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. Within your wounds I hide. Never to leave. Father, tonight take every heart. Recapture us. Recapture us. Recapture us back to you. Back to you. Back to you. To your cross. While we stay in this atmosphere, just don't, don't move for a moment. If you've come into this place and you know your life is not right with God, I'm not speaking about the prayer we prayed now. There's something more fundamentally wrong. It's a gift that God gives to every human being. You don't need a prophet to tell you you're in sin. Everybody knows. It's a wonderful gift. You know when you do wrong. You know. God just gives it to everyone. You know. You know. You don't have to go and see a counselor. You know if you're right with God or not. And if you're not, tonight I want to give you an opportunity to do so. You might ask the question, how do I get right with God? It's actually really simple. You have to acknowledge that he is right and you wrong. That he's holy and you are unholy. That he's a savior and you're a sinner. It's really easy. So, I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm a sinner. I'm unholy. You are right. You're a savior. You are holy and you can save me. You can save me. The Apostle Paul said it this way, if you believe in your heart that Christ died for your sins and that God resurrected him from the dead and in response to that knowledge, you say, Christ, Jesus is my Lord. He is the Lord. You are saved. So tonight, can we close our eyes just for a second? I'm not going to ask you to come forward, but I'm going to ask you to do this. If you know your life is not right with God, quickly raise your hand and then put it down. I can see those hands. I see it. I see it. One more time, I see those hands. I see a number of hands raised. Thank you. I see those hands. Thank you. Once you've raised it, you can put it down. One more time. If you've not raised it quickly, just raise it. And we're going to pray. Let us all pray this together. Not just the ones that raised their hands, but for the ones who raised their hands, this is your prayer. This is your moment. Pray with me. Dear Father, here I am. You are right. I am wrong. You are holy. I am unholy. You're a savior. I'm a sinner. I believe that you died for my sins. And that you are, were raised from the dead. Tonight, I ask you to wash me. To cleanse me. To save me. And I confess, Jesus, you are Lord. You are my Lord now and forever. Thank you for saving me. Amen.
If you've prayed this prayer for the first time ever, please go ahead. I'm going to encourage you at the end, there will be all kinds of really handsome people standing in front of you. This is the problem with shofar. All handsome. I don't know what in the world is going. Something is in the water here. Um, I think it's maybe Pastor Fred's anointing that flows over. Um, perhaps. If you've not, if you've prayed this for the very first time or you've rededicated, I'm going to ask you, at the end of the service, come forward and come and talk to somebody. Make a connection. This is an incredible place. If you don't stay here, they will tell you where to go to church. But if you stay here, this is a great family. Amen. I'm going to give to Pastor Fred. Can we just for a moment thank God for the prophetic witness of Pastor Fred, Pastor Lucille. They have truly become a father and a mother to me in the faith. I am grateful for what I've learned from them. Let's just give them a good hand clap. God bless you. so much. Uh, this is where I'd better say nothing. I've asked Brian to come forward because this moment is so precious. And this is all the Father. See us respond to the tugging and the drawing of the Holy Spirit. That's all he wants. Because with it comes all the grace to do whatever he wants us to do. And this is a missions and worship weekend. And I Excuse this. Uh, you caused this. so blessed that God is, is transitioning us, moving us beyond the idolatry and the obsession of our own contribution. God has showed me just a few years ago that for people like me in ministry, that we don't really love Jesus. We love the fact that we can do for him, do something for him and make a contribution feel significant so we have conferences about significance and relevance and a whole bunch of things that amount to self-idolatry and the hardest thing that God could call us to do sometimes is what Cornet touched on the other night when he says be quiet don't do anything just be just be with me just be that's what makes this moment special. And, and as we worship now, can I ask you to just remain in the state of being? In other words, worship this weekend has grown to where it's more than a song. And I was saying to Brian's guys this morning, and I was saying to Graham too, I so enjoy receiving worship from them because it has nothing to do with his skill, his talent, his gift. It's got nothing to do with the sum of the parts of the minister. It's got nothing to do with gifts and talents and purpose and all those wonderful things we're talking about. It's got everything to do with the whole life in the hand of Christ. Which makes it more than a song. Which makes it more than an experience. More than an inspiring moment. It's that place of convergence where our life becomes an extension of the life of our Christ because of us being in his hand. And that's all that God wants from us tonight. And so we're not inviting you to sing another song, to do anything more, to wrap anything up. But just allow me to say this one thing. 
and it's prophetic. That the body of Christ around the world, we just have a small part tonight of millions of people in the West. We must all make this transition that we're making tonight. Out of a life of spiritual prostitution. And into where we move into the purity of the bride of Christ. Where we're only with him because we adore him. And we want to be with him and we're in love with him. Not because he pays us or blesses us. Makes us feel special, not for any of those things. And we don't have that purity of heart, we don't. And God has been speaking to me here about my own heart. For us as a church, He's reduced us down to nothing in terms of numbers, finances, and everything. I'm not saying this to make a statement. But Christ told me three years ago that He's not happy with us as a church because he wasn't happy with me because he's holy and he's seeking a holiness that he's longing to draw us into and I enjoy what I do so much and my time on earth so much I don't, I'm not in love with him like I miss him and longing and want to be with him in eternity I want to save the world. I want to have masses respond. And it still connects to desires relating to my own contribution. And it's a fine line because it's all spiritual ambitions. But I just want to encourage you to tonight. Just open up your heart, because he's beginning to do it in my heart. In the middle of the day when the sun shines, and everything is great, and my wife loves me, and my kids are beautiful, and people around me are special, and there's, still an, there's, there's a new thing, there's an ache and a void, a longing for, for him to be with him. And he's rekindling something in me. I've been pursuing faith for so many years, but I've, I've not had the eternal hope that the people that Courtney talked about tonight, that praised in that woods years ago, when they were, didn't, didn't mind getting fed to the lions, and our friends in the Middle East who don't mind getting machine gunned down and hacked to pieces by machete, wielding attackers. They do it with a song in their heart and just that as an extension of their worship. Well, my heart's not there because it's not at the cross. But I'm wanting God to restore my heart to be part of a bride that is consumed with longing for Him. Nothing else. So, Father, we ask that you, you would just sanctify us. God, and we take you seriously tonight because you didn't threaten us or warn us, but you stated as a matter of fact that without sanctification, we won't see you and we confess our blindness tonight. Our jadedness. And Jesus, we know that we change when we see you, but it's so hard to see you. It's going to share tonight because we're not really focused. We'd like to see a whole lot of stuff and you're just one of them. And so we never see you. And, and God, we just walk away from all those versions that have been programmed into us about becoming too radical or fanatical or whatever, God, and we walk away from that and we forget all about the stuff and the, the dogma and the doctrine and, and 
And we ask, Lord, that you would just come meet us where we're at right now. Because we're moving toward your cross. Jesus, tonight, whatever it takes from this point onwards, we want to meet you there and we want to meet each other there. Because, God, we are so fractured, so divided. And we do your name so much damage because of our obsession with ourselves and our own significance and our own importance. And, you know, God, we, we don't love one another. We, we still compete. And if you, you were to bring pressure to bear on us tonight, we'd all scatter. God, tonight, here we are. You've been doing it throughout the ages. Come and do it for us. Too. You're doing it in other parts of the world. You're doing it in many hearts that are here already tonight. Come and do it in all our hearts in Jesus' name. I want us just to, uh, Graham, would you come, where's Graham? I think he's at the back somewhere. Graham, just come forward. I just want to thank the two of you guys for having come here. I, I have such a sense of, um, of something, something so great that, that you're doing. And, uh, you know, we invited them hoping that maybe one of the two of them could make it. And then both of them could, <laughs> could make it. And... <laughs> And we want to thank you for the deposit of the heart of David that you brought, not just to this little building and to our hearts, but by way of representation, we, we are actually just proxy tonight for a lot of people that are about to wake up to worship in this nation. And we, we, we just want to agree with you that um, your obedience here would uh, cause the Spirit of God to restore the tabernacle of David in our midst. And that the rains that are falling on our lives and on our hearts, it's not a shower as in the bathroom, it's open skies over our nation. God doesn't send one swallow when he announces spring. He sends flocks. He doesn't send drops when he sends rain. And um, like Elijah, we just want to look at, at you and, and, and see you as the, those little clouds the size of a man's hand. And uh, we just want to tell you that we choose to read the signs of the times. It's time to gird our loins, time to run, because the sounds of heavy rain are coming. Amen. There's the sound of an abundance of rain. I'm going to be very bold right now. You know, I, I invited Angus here for a good reason. Um, it wasn't 12 years ago. See, I said the other night it was 12 years ago. It was just a couple, a handful of years ago when uh, one day we invited uh, um, Angus to minister here. And uh, we had a bit of a crisis uh, that weekend because... Uh, we were a little bit double-crossed, so we didn't have a venue, and uh, we didn't have a choice, but by the Tuesday, uh, as I was praying, said, God, what are we going to do? <laughs> we, we can't have church over the weekend. Then he just laid my heart that he's arranged this because he wanted us to go to the Donnie Craven Stadium. Nobody's ever had church there. He said, I want you to do it there. And you know what happened that night? 17 and a half thousand people pitched with nobody really knew Angus yet, you know. And uh, that Monday morning, and I'm not telling this story to glorify myself. I'm just wanting to engender faith for what I'm about to say. Um, on the Monday morning, Angus was very elated. He said, I want the videos. I want the pictures. And I said to him, I'm giving you nothing. 
I said, because that crowd was small, and I just had a sense in my heart to tell him that before the end of this month, the stadiums will begin to fill all over, and you're not to go back to small meetings because it's going to grow big to where it's massive, vast crowds, but before the end of this month, and he looked at me like, <laughs> duh, <laughs> you know, like it's going to happen, and uh, it was the 22nd of that month when he called me from a cell phone somewhere in the free state. <laughs> he says... It's two hours, it's two o'clock, my meeting's meant to start at four o'clock, but I'm in a car driving to a stadium. The people arrived at the building, we're meant to have the meeting at, but there are too many people for the building, so they moved them to the stadium. But it's two hours early, and I'm about to preach now at two o'clock to a crowd that just arrived out of nowhere. And then it just, you know the rest of the story, he showed us some of that. I, I have a sense that God and... Uh, it's an invitation for you guys to come back. God's going to be filling stadiums, all our new grand stadiums with worship in this nation. And he's going to unite the church, the body of Christ, before the cross and before the throne of God. But now the last time it was just a hunch. This time it, it's, a, it's a sense, but it's also prayer. Um, all my brothers, our brothers that have come from far, Rodney and Lita, Nita, all the brothers that have, that have come here to join us, come, come, come onto stage quickly. Because this for me is the highlight of the whole weekend. We, we started with the scripture, Psalm 133, how good and pleasant is when, when brothers dwell in unity because there God commands the blessing. And um, I, I tell you, not, not all of our speakers are here right now. Where, where's Aharon? Is he in the building? He was, yeah. I'm not wanting to forget anybody. Okay, as, as you're sitting out, I want you just to, to agree with us. Thanks, thanks, Kune. Is, is, is. Angus was saying it over and over last night, and to, uh, at the end of the meeting, we were at the back and we were praying, and he. He was just overcome with a, such a sense of urgency. He kept saying, the country's on a knife point. It's at a, you know, at, at, at a critical edge. It's at the edge of the precipice. And we, we all know that. We need an intervention from God. We don't need bigger churches, better churches. We, we, just, we don't need great ministries. We just need God to save our nation. All the rest will come as a matter of course. Um, and, uh, you know, all of these men represent incredible things that God is doing. And um, it is so amazing that, that when we bring all of that grace and all of that focus, all of that anointing to a place of convergence and pray that God would bless at one place. I, I remember I used to be part of a fraternal when we just started the church and it didn't last for very long because uh, when the guys started getting blessed, they didn't need each other anymore. But I remember on a Friday evening, at quite late after 10 o'clock, we drive out to whoever's church in whichever city. And, and as pastors, we would just pray that, that God would establish that work. Now, that wasn't denominational or anything. We were just friends. We were just wanting to see the kingdom of God come. But I tell you, it was so awesome to see what God would do in response to those prayers. Because we weren't being self-focused. It was about His church and what He wanted. And uh, in that sense, what you see standing before you tonight are, are men that are just so committed to Christ and to the cause of Christ. I want us to just join our faith that God would cause, as, as He's been filling stadiums with men, that He would begin to fill stadiums with worshipers, that He would do it sovereignly, spontaneously, but now, it's the time of heavy rain now. Let's pray. You guys just pray in the Spirit if you'd please. I want us to join hands right here. Father, we are yours. Would you take us? Father, we are ready. We are ready for our hearts to be transformed. Open our eyes, open our ears, open our hearts that we might see and understand and change. Strengthen our hands, strengthen our feet. And Lord, we pray that you would remove 
every bit of pride and arrogance and self-importance and competitiveness away from us. May Christ be our only focus. Lord, unite our hearts with yours. And Lord, we are ready to say, let your will be done in our lives, in our families, in our churches, in our cities, in our towns, in this country, on this continent, in this world, as it is in heaven. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done now, here, as it is in heaven. And Lord, tonight we covenant with you that we will only give you the glory. Together with the psalmist, we want to pray, not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto your name. Give glory. Send forth your spirit and renew the face of this earth. Christ be all. May Christ be all. We are yours. Every one of us, we are yours. Your will be done. We pray this in the name of Jesus, whom we declare to be our joy and our hope and our rest and our love. You are indeed everything. Amen. The stadium is now I speak to you. All of you, in every place all over this nation, and we say to you, you shall be filled with the sounds of worship. You shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. And from you shall emanate and cover like a blanket the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. Not over this nation, but over southern Africa in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that your glory shall displace darkness and gross darkness. And Lord, on that day, soon coming day, when the nations are gathered before you, we want to declare right now that this will be a sheep nation. In Jesus' name. For those of you coming from other nations, I just want to give us a moment. I want you to make the same declaration over the nation that you come from. Just stand up where you are. Um, these gentlemen will, will, will do it. Just stand up and, and speak that for your nation. And, and, and as they do, I want us all to agree with them right now. Because that's what this conference is all about. We're just acting on the Lord's prayer. We're calling the kingdom of God down on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. So just pray out loudly and boldly all at the same time. We are, but for the nations and for the regions. Brothers, can we all do it for our nations? Just call the kingdom of God to come down and come upon the church of Jesus Christ and clothe us with the glorious garments of praise and of worship and of glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah. Yes, God, we ask you for the nations. We ask you for the nations. They belong to you, Lord. So we ask you, ask you, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we can ask you to rescue them from the darkness, Lord, that is beginning to take hold of them. We thank you, Father, that you will shake them at their foundations, but we pray, Lord, for a shaking of mercy and not a shaking of wrath and indignation. In the name of Jesus, Father, we know that every nation, all of our nations deserve, they're deserving of your wrath, Father. They're deserving of your indignation. They're deserving of your fury. But Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for the shaking of your mercy, the shaking of your grace, the shaking of your kindness. Father, in Jesus' name, and we pray for the wind, Lord, not for typhoons and hurricanes. Father, not for tornadoes, but Father, we pray for the breeze of your spirit. 
Oh, Father, we pray for the brooding of your Holy Spirit upon the chaos in our nation. We thank you that you're attracted to our chaos. We thank you that you're comfortable with our chaos. We thank you that you're not intimidated by our chaos and by our darkness. But, Father, you're attracted to it. And so we call for you to inhabit our chaos, inhabit our despair, inhabit our national gloom and our darkness. Father, only you can save, only you can deliver, only you can restore. I, I'm wanting us to stay in faith you know God has shown me that there are designated places on the earth in the days in which we are to come that will be cities of refuge like we had in the Old Testament to which people can run to for safety and sanity and I just want you to consider whether God is speaking to you in your heart as to whether he wants to have your city your nation a city of refuge and I I want us to cry out together for our nations, that God would make them cities of refuge at this time. Amen? Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, I'm going to take the microphone away. I'm just kicking it off. But I'm, I'm asking for what I believe is a promise for our nation, that this will be a city of refuge Amen. in the days to come. Amen? Amen. Everybody stand. And, and after this, you can go home. Hallelujah. 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 Theo, if you're out there, just come forward with your horn so we can finish this thing off properly. Thanks. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, God, we consecrate every city of refuge to you now. And we say there will be shalom, there will be peace, there will be salvation, there will be deliverance. There will be your blessing. But Lord, over every habitation, there will be the canopy of glory. Lord, the knowledge of your glory will cover our dwellings and our cities, our communities and our congregations as canopies of glory. We bless you. And, and just before we go, Brian and Graham, thanks for the worship. Brian will be here tomorrow morning again, and Graham will be here in the evening. If you haven't had enough, you're welcome to get some more. We're going to do extended worship. I'm going to ask Theo just to blow that thing. It was meant to get blown on Thursday night. I mean, we didn't plan it that way, but it was Rosh Hashanah, the start of the new year. And, and God gave us word that just this weekend together represents a new chapter. Apostle Paul says, forgetting what lies behind. There comes a place when one has to, by an act of the will, close a chapter. I just want you to know that what we're doing right now is closing a chapter. I don't know where you're at in your life. I want to encourage you to close a chapter. I want you to understand that there was great grace in your life. It's beautiful grace, but that grace has expired. It's reached its sell by date. And Paul says... There's a grace, a new grace to walk into a new chapter, a new day, a new dispensation. And as this horn blows, close the chapter. Walk into a new season. Embrace a new promise. Receive fresh strength from the Lord tonight. To go and do what you've never done and be what you've never been. But to do what you were always meant to do and to be what you're always destined to be in Christ. Amen. In eternity. Bless you. Oh my. You, you share that with me. I just, I just have this thing to just shake the dust off my garment. If you want to take your jersey or your jacket and just shake it off toward the back and say, this is finished. <laughs> you could just blow that on again just to cover up my blunder. <laughs> but let's no, just do that. <laughs> you could dust yourself.
So this is in the past, I shake it off. Bless you. God be with you.